Hello again everyone. Uh, today's subject is how to take a tree survey that we've done and move that into InfraWorks, have that display in InfraWorks, and have the species of the trees and the sizes of the trees automatically display based on the information that we send from Civil 3D. So this is a multi-step process. What we're starting with is an ASCII file, and you'll note we have point number, northing, easting, elevation, description, and then you'll see we have another column here for the trunk size in inches. As we scroll down, you'll see we have cedar trees, we have pine trees, oak, I think there's a madrone somewhere, just one, etc. Okay, so the first step we want to do is prepare the points in Civil 3D for export to Autodesk Spatial Data Format, or SDF, so that we can import that into InfraWorks and stylize the incoming three-dimensional models based on the data we have here. Inside Civil 3D, I'm going to start a new drawing. using my AutoCAD Civil 3D Imperial NCS template. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, and this is very important when you're sending information between Civil 3D and InfraWorks, you should always set up your drawing to a coordinate system. In our case we are USA California NAT 83 Zone 2 US foot. Okay? So just make sure you do that. Otherwise you will have trouble uh, placing your uh, your symbology correctly uh, in InfraWorks. Our next step is to set up your the Civil 3D drawing to accept that additional column of data. So here I go to my tool space settings tab, expand point, and you'll see at the top, user defined property classifications. Your drawing will have one classification set called unclassified. What we're going to do is create our own classification set for trees. So I will right click here and say new, and the classification name will be tree. So within tree, I need a, a at least a single column of data uh, that needs to be populated. So I will do that. I'll make a new column of data. And this will be called diameter of the trunk in inches. This is, a, this is going to be a double is our field type. So that's a, like a real number, right? Okay, default value, I think it should have some kind of value, so I'm going to say 1.0, 1 inch. Now that we have the uh, database set up with our user-defined property uh, that we need, the trunk diameter in inches, what we need to do now is create a point file format so that we can import that existing ASCII file and populate that property that we created with the data coming in from that file. So go to your settings tab, expand point, find point file formats, expand that. Now the point file I have is very similar to point number, northern easting elevation, description, comma delimited, uh, but it has an additional column for the trunk diameter. So what I can do is I can copy this style and let's rename it. So we'll call it PNEZD plus diameter. Okay, everything else will be the same except this column down here next to raw description. We want to change that. And because we have set up the uh, user defined property classification ahead of time, that shows up here as a column available for this import format. Precision, I just want one place, it's fine. Say OK to that. All right. Now it's time to import the points. 
So let's go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, Points from File, retrieve our file, which was Points with Trunk Diameter, find our Point File Format, PNEZD Plus Diameter, and you'll see here the diameter is being populated with data, so that looks correct, and say OK. Okay, so having imported the points, we want to prove to ourselves that we have imported those trunk diameters. So if we pick those points, right click and go to Edit Points, we can scroll over and find this column, Diameter of Trunk in Inches. So that has been populated correctly. So the next step, having that, is to export these points to Autodesk SDF format, spatial data format. Now you can do that using the uh, output export civil objects to SDF. But what this does is this only sends certain properties of points. This does, will not send user defined properties so because of this limitation in the export to SDF, we have to develop a workaround. So the workaround we've developed is to create an AutoCAD point at every location where there is a Civil 3D Kogo point and then apply AutoCAD map based object data to these AutoCAD points. We can then take those AutoCAD points and e export those as SDF format, and that will uh, send any of the object data that we have attached. In order to create object data that we can export, we'll switch our workspace to Planning and Analysis. This is AutoCAD Map 3D that we're entering here. So if you go to your Map Setup tab, move over here to Define Object Data. This is where we create a data table that resides right here in the drawing. So we'll say New Table. Table name is going to be Trees. And then we need fields. What information do we need on those trees? Well, we need a species, which will be character based, description, and default. Let's add that column. And then let's make another column, and this will be trunk diameter. This will be, let's make it real data. Could be integer also, because if you're only accepting full inches, then it could be integer. So description, and the default will be one inch. Let's add that information as well. And say OK. So now we have a data table set up. Now we could, if we want, go along and uh, use the AutoCAD point command to put a point at the node. Okay, I'm going to set it up so AutoCAD points display here on the screen. Okay, so that white symbol is the AutoCAD point and it is placed over the top of the Kogo point. Then if I wanted to attach object data to that longhand, we're going to do it shorthand, but I want you to see this. I would go to Create, Attach, Detach, Object Data. There's my table. This is the species, okay. So I'd take species and I'd set the value that I want to use. Uh, cedar. Oh, this one's pine I'm looking at. So let's say pine. And let's say the trunk diameter is 15 inches. 
Okay, and I say attach to objects and it attaches that information to the object. Now, rather than you going through that, unless you only have a very few points, then it may take you a short amount of time and you just go on. But rather than for larger uh, projects, rather than going through all that, what we've done is we've written a Lisp routine that will do this for you automatically by reading the point data, the point description will be placed in the species field and the extra field that we've done for the trunk diameter will be then placed into the uh, diameter field of this object data. So then we can export to SDF correctly and then stylize in civil or in InfraWorks. Now we're to the point where we want to run the Lisp routine that will automatically add points and object data for every Kobo point that is in this drawing. So I'm going to use the AutoCAD app load command. And this file is called convert to ACAD points with OB data, meaning object data. So let's load that. And then I have set up, so if I type go, it runs. Okay. I've put a warning in there. Be sure you have assigned the correct UDP table to the point groups to which the points you are about to pick belong. Press enemy key to continue or escape to fix. So what am I talking about here? You need to go here on Prospector to your point groups. In this case, I only have one point group called All Points. I'll right click, go to Properties. Over here on the Summary tab, in the general collection, you'll see classification. Make sure that is set to your trees or tree uh, UDP classification. And then any fields that are within that will become available to this list routine. So be sure that you do that before you run this routine. Okay, so we're gonna say go. Yes, we get the warning and that's fine. So we hit enter. It says select objects. You can put a window around the Kobo points. If there's other objects, that's fine. The routine only picks out the Kobo points. So, and then I hit enter. The program runs through. And it has now created a point object at every Kobo point. Now, if I pick that, I'll show you. We pick a point, we go to properties, and now you'll see we have the species and the trunk diameter in inches in our object data table called trees. So the next step then is to export those AutoCAD points with the object data out using Autodesk SDF or spatial data format. To do the SDF export, what I will do is I will switch my workspace to Planning and Analysis. This is AutoCAD Map. Go over here to Output, and then Drawing to SDF. Pick a file. I'm gonna I'm gonna overwrite this existing file. Let's overwrite it. I'll use the Select Objects to export. I'll use Select manually, and then pick the filter and tell it my object type is point. And then if color equals by layer, it will be added to the selections. In this case, yes, the, uh, all the objects are color by layer. So I say OK. It tells me 311 objects selected to filter out. Now, the next step is very important. I have to go here to my Feature Class tab, pick Select Attributes, and turn on that object data that I'm exporting. Okay, so I could pick like here for trees. Um, this must be done or you won't be able to stylize these points as they come in to InfraWorks. On the Options tab, you can see I have my coordinate system set. I want to leave it at that. That's what I'm working on in InfraWorks, so that's fine. Say OK. The SDF file has now been created. So I'm over here in InfraWorks now. You can see that I've already imported a surface model uh, from data from the same survey. Uh, and now it's time to bring in those points. So what I've done as a matter of setup is I've gone into my style palette. 
into 3D model and I made my own new folder called custom symbols. Into that I created new styles, a style called cedar, madrone, oak, pine, and then tree. So I have a style whose name exactly matches a species name that will be coming in with my SDF file. That's very important. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the import. So I go here to data sources down and say SDF. Here's my SDF file I'm going to import and I hit open. So now we need to configure that SDF file. So let's pick that. Oh, give it a name. It gave it a layer name. So I'm going to call this uh, trees from survey. Now important here we have to set a type. So let's go down and tell it it's trees and then move over to the script tab. This is the part where we are able to tell the software how to stylize and size these incoming trees based on that object data that we created in Civil 3D. So if I hit edit, go down in here, and then I can type in, or in my case, I'm just going to paste because I saved it previously, and I'll explain what this means. So we say trees dot manual style equals and then 3D model and that's coming from this style palette what collection so they're in the 3D model slash custom symbols collection that has to be in quotes notice the placement of the slashes and that those are forward slashes that's critical and then a space and then plus and then source meaning the incoming file that's the source then in square bracket and quotes species that's the object data field called species so the manual style equals the species and then i say trees dot model underscore scale x equals source trunk diameter in inches so i am x y and z scaling this tree based on the trunk diameter now if you can get your surveyors to also pick up a height of the tree we could use a height field here in the Z area if we wanted. And so that's up to you within your company and being able to get the surveyors to do that for you. Okay, so then I just hit close and refresh. And then you see I have trees of various size and various species based on the object data that came in from Civil 3D. Um, if you want a copy of the LISP routine that we used, you can phone us at 530-221-2994 or you can email support at deltaengineeringsystems.com.